Sometimes being an entrepreneur is a pretty lonely space. You just have challenges people don't understand. When I first went there and I was in a room and we all had the exact same challenges, whether you're like new to business or you're a multi-million dollar business, it's funny how the challenges are the same. Welcome to Gentle Frog's Bookkeeping Lilypad, your cozy corner of the podcasting world, where numbers tell a story and bookkeeping blossoms into an adventure. My name is Rachel Barnett, and I'm glad you're here. This podcast is for bookkeepers who enjoy authentic, unfiltered, and always encouraging friend to chalk shop with. We will be discussing what it's like to own and operate a small bookkeeping business. With me today, I've got Jody Snow from Calculate Co. She's been in my mastermind group and a friend for just shy of forever. We talk weekly via Zoom, all week long on Slack. And then we met in person for the first time at a Hector's conference last October in Miami. So that was super cool. We're just going to talk for a bit about creative and highly affordable ways to market your business, because we know that when people are starting out, they have more time than money. And so when you're in that position, you need to be wise with your money and do what you can and not just throw money at the problem and hope that somebody else will do all your marketing. It'll just magically work. So we're hoping that these tips are going to be useful and helpful for you guys. I feel like you do a better job of going to networking events than I do because I just don't. So that's a low bar. It's true. (laughs) Yeah. So I actually don't do any marketing really, right? Other than going to networking events. How do you decide which events to go to? What do you take with you? Do you take business cards, flyers, pens? I take just business cards, you know, and I have my LinkedIn little QR code ready to go. So just from going and handing out my business cards, I don't have any swag that I hand out. And it's just getting to know people. I like to go to the free ones. If it's a happy hour, that's a bonus. So if it looks like fun and something, I oh, I would probably go to that place anyway. Fort Worth has some really good free networking events and they just rotate restaurants like bar and grills that they're at. And they do a happy hour once a month. And then I'm an alumni of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. And they do events quarterly. And some people have good experience with BNI or Chambers. I just didn't. So I'm not a member of those. I have been invited and have went to when they have free get togethers, like trying to grow their chapters. I've been to those. But typically, I just go to the fun community ones that small groups are trying to put together. And some coffee houses have them. Where are you finding these? (laughs) Just random. And most of them I find on Facebook. And there's one called One Million Cups. And they do a lot also. And there's our mice. And they're both virtual and in person. Do you go to the virtual ones or just the in-person ones? I do go to virtual also. So the One Million Cups is virtual. And then one I did mention is that TW Women's Leadership Institute. They do one monthly. Um, I go to that one virtual. Yeah. All of the happy hours I go in person. I, I really enjoy those. I would too. It is hard to just meet someone for the first time and go in by yourself, right? And the drink just kind of takes the edge off. And <laughs> I enjoy a good cocktail. Yeah, I feel the same. Yeah, so even if I don't meet anybody, I think I got to try a new place. I wouldn't have went otherwise. That's a good point. So yeah, that's probably my favorite part of being in business. Trying the new places? Yeah, and going happy hour is such a low pressure environment to meet people. And honestly, everybody is there for the same exact reason, which is to make connections and get to know each other. I mean, I think a lot of people go thinking, oh, I got to get the sale, right? Which probably is the end goal of everybody there. But I try to go and think, okay, I just want to go and meet people. I have genuine curiosity about people in business. And it's okay with me that they don't choose me. And sometimes people apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, I already have a bookkeeper. I'm like, no, that's great. I mean, that's why we're all here, right? So you have someone that works for you. That's fantastic. And so what I try to do is if somebody does start asking me questions, I get their card and I either make a note in my phone or on the card and I think of what question they had. And then I follow up with them. I don't answer all their questions there, but I'm like, oh, that's a great question. Let me respond to you once I have time to think and, you know, we're not drinking. Right. I like that. Like I'm a person who would probably try to answer all the questions right then to be extra helpful, but then there's no dialogue. I'm not in their email. Like there's no follow up. And we know QuickBooks or whatever software you use without even looking at it, right? Right. So we can just instantly shoot off these answers, but they don't look at it as much as we do. So they can't visualize it. So it really is kind of not helpful to them either. I like that. 
one of the things that I get stuck on or feel awkward about is when people are like, oh, and what do you do? I'm like, well, I'm a bookkeeper. I teach people how to use QuickBooks. I'll have like a one sentence response and then I'll just stand there awkwardly. I used to just say, you know, I have a bookkeeping business, but people then started to ask me questions about book recommendations. And honestly, it took me longer than it should have to figure out, oh, they think I'm a librarian. Right. So <laughs> you're like, no, no, different kind of books. <laughs> because I also like to read. So I was like, oh, OK. And then we're talking. I'm like, wait a minute. They have no idea I like to read. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned your alumni of Goldman Sachs 10,000 program. I don't know anything sure. about it. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done for my career. So they have regional or like a national cohort. And then they also have some special minority cohorts. You apply to go in and the criteria changes as they go, but it's totally free, put on by Goldman Sachs. And it is a 16 to 20 week program teaching you about all aspects of your business, how to dive deeper, how to help and each other. So what I like to about it is sometimes being an entrepreneur is a pretty lonely space. You just have challenges people don't understand. And so when I first went there and I was in a room and we all had the exact same challenges, whether you're like new to business or you're a multi-million dollar business, it's funny how the challenges are the same. They just are scaled. So yeah, I, I found my people. I love it. I still go quarterly to their events. They do every couple of years. They have a big small business summit in Washington, D.C. And you can meet your representatives and have like an audience with them. So yeah, the conferences are great. We've gotten advice like Warren Buffett's been there, Richard Branson, Sarah Blakely from Spanx, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, they're a lot of fun and they're totally no cost. It's just that you have to pay to get there and you have a very small hotel fee. I recommend it to anybody who's interested, even just going to local if you never go to the national conference. And it's great. I'm hosting an event for them the end of March here in Fort Worth. And the fee to people is just whatever drinks you might want. Usually someone sponsors the food. And it's just a great way to meet all business owners. You do have to be a business owner to be a part of it. That's cool. I, yeah. I like that your marketing and networking is meeting people, low stress, not necessarily sales and stuff like this, which is just business owners getting together to talk about stuff. Absolutely. And I think I have asked sometimes people who follow up with me, like, why did you pick me? And one yeah. of the answers is I just am relatable and no pressure because I truly am not a hard sale. If I'm not for you, that's fine. I hope you find someone who is and I'm happy to refer you to people who might be a better fit as well. That's true. Like I've met you in person. You're a very chill, easygoing kind of person. And I imagine you'd be the same at a networking event with potential clients. I just really do like to get to know people. Have you done anything else to market or build your business? Like I've done a ton of stuff and some of it worked and most of it didn't. It just kind of happens over time that people get to know you and start referring you. But is there anything that you're like, oh, this was a really good use of my time? You know, I took a score class. I think it was $60 for how to build your online presence because I had tried hiring SEO and spent a lot of money and got nothing. So I took a score class on how to do it yourself and it's $60 forever. They meet like once a month and you're welcome to go at any time. And it really laid out the steps, what your website needs to say, the channels to have it listed on and that I could see immediate improvement just from my analytics from Google you could see that instantly change. And then once I did that, the goal of that class was to get in the top three of your businesses for your area. And it worked like right away. Yeah. yeah. How to get the keywords. And I haven't even applied all of it. They really do recommend having a blog. I don't have one. That's okay. A blog is a lot of work. I only have one because Jess will do it for me. I see what you're doing. I'll take your verbal words and I'll put them in typed words. I've taken some score workshops and I'm glad that I've taken them. When I did in-person workshops, it was kind of nice because you go around the room and just quickly say who you are. And so people would be like, oh, that person, accounting, cool. And then maybe they come up to you during break. I'm legitimately there to learn a thing. But if you happen to discover that I offer accounting and bookkeeping services, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I found a lot of people too. You get to go to them and you realize, oh, here's someone I connect with. And even though there are some people who don't need me and I don't really use their services, we've been great referral partners for each other. 
And a lot of times I meet people who would be very helpful to my clients. So I just feel like it looks good for me too when they give my clients good service. That brings up my question. I had somebody cold message me just the other day. Hey, I'm a, you know, we're in the same Facebook group, but I'm a CFO and we should be referral partners and refer back and forth. And I'm like, I've never had any interaction with you at all. I don't understand why I would refer my clients to you. <laughs> in order for me to refer my client to someone, I have to get to know the person. It's you have to know, like, and trust them. It just happens over time after seeing them over and over again, Zoom calls and meetings and whatever. I don't know. I feel like you can't go straight to hello, my name is please refer your business to me. <laughs> right. I'm with you on that. I met like a lawyer one time and his card said entertainment lawyer. And I happened to have a client who needed one. And I said, I've never met this person, but I just got this card. I don't know anything else. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a very specialized industry as opposed to like financial planners, where every time you go to a networking event, you're going to meet at least one, but often more. <laughs> Oh, yes. And PNC agents. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, just a regular everyday insurance agent. Yeah, that's really my struggle is just how to be nice to those people. I'm totally willing to entertain this possibility, but I don't know you. Maybe we interact with each other, but I'm also not going to like stop what I'm doing during my day to have a 20 minute Zoom call with you just to get to know each other. Yeah, I think the same thing. I do have people who reach out to me at Facebook too about either wanting to learn bookkeeping and needing a mentor or... Mm -hmm who want to be a subcontractor. Yeah, I get them a lot on LinkedIn. And I'm like, I have plenty of people that I know who I've been providing training to. And I refer to those people because I know their style. I know that they're serious about learning as opposed to just a random person. So props to them for the cold messages, but no. The worst that people can say is no. Maybe you live in a remote area and that's your best shot. It's not hard to try. Where I'm living nowhere near my clients. I'm like, oh, it feels like I'm living remote <laughs> two hours away from the U.S. Oh, we should talk about some of the free stuff that we can do. Some of the free things that I've done is set up a Google My Business profile. I had a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor profile. I set up a profile basically anywhere that I could, Yelp and Thumbtack and any of that. The Google My Business profile has been helpful because I can get reviews on there. And then people who are searching on Google Maps for a bookkeeper all show up. Are there like free places that you've got profiles set up that you're glad that you did it or just things in general? Well, the Pro Advisor one works good for me. The tip that I have for people is I know some people go out and they put on a professional suit and they get the fancy headshot. That didn't work for me. Like I had almost opposite. And then once I changed it to a more natural look, it was just a snapshot. I think my son took it of me. I started getting calls and people are like, oh, you look like someone I can relate to. And because what we do is very personal and people, especially for cleanups, they feel embarrassed. Like they should be more on top of their books than they are. So because I asked that and that's the feedback I got is I just look like I wouldn't be judgmental, which I'm not. So don't be stuffy, you know, unless that's a clientele that you're going to. Most of my clients are tradesmen or construction. So they just want someone similar to them. Maybe if you were looking for corporate clients, that might be a good look for you. The Google My Business, that's a big one. Have a website. I think people yeah. just want something to show that you're legitimate. And if you're using a Yahoo or, you know, sunnyday at gmail.com or something, that doesn't give them the same level of comfort maybe to find you for the first time, especially when you have no reviews. Having a business email will cost you a few bucks. Website will cost you a few bucks, but just having it, even if it's just a very simple, like one page template, you have a couple of stock images and then a picture of you in the backyard. And a lot of the places that you go for networking, like they publish those advanced and you give permission to put your name on it. So yeah. one million cops, yeah, you get on their list. Texas women's, you get on the list. So get on that's also free because everyone also has right. that list to use. And sometimes they reach out to you. They're not supposed to use them to market, but it at least does have people. And I from score, just attending the classes I was interested in and meeting other people, they always reach out too. Those are all pretty free. Score is very low cost, but their mailing list, it doesn't cost anything to be on that. Yeah, I spend very little in marketing. 
That's great. It's important for people to know that it's possible to get your name out because there's too much, I feel, pressure for people to like go get the perfect thing or spend the money. Oh my gosh, if your copy isn't just right, you're never going to. And it's not true. Just get out there and improve on the things you want to improve on and lean into who you are. Yeah. Oh, another one I forgot about is Facebook groups and not, not always business groups. There's general construction groups, there's roofing groups, but there's also neighborhood groups. And there's so many businesses in each of those. And they usually have a free day you can post. Usually oh. like the first day of the month or something like that. But so many times people are like, hey, who in here knows QuickBooks? Oh, sure. And once you start helping people, first of all, respond yourself and be like, hey, I do, you know, let's chat. And then once people start seeing that, they'll be like, oh, we saw that and they'll start referring you to. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like I think about Facebook and I think about all the groups where every other bookkeeper is in, but you bring up a good point. Figure out where you want to be, like what your niche is. Sure, like I put in all the time your name because people are like, oh, I'm really looking for training. That's not what I do. So find a friend who does and refer that friend also and be like, oh, I'm not good at that. I'm better at doing, but you know, Gentle Frog is who I send my training to. <laughs> she does a much better job. So feel free to partner with people that you have a level of comfort that they can provide a service that you can't because that's totally okay. Nobody can do everything. Exactly. Yeah, I've recently discovered that I can do bookkeeping and business ownership, but not house cleaning. Yeah. Usually when you start, because yeah. you don't have any money until you start making money. That's exactly it. 